In this lecture, I'm going to briefly go over the neurotransmitters. And as many of you know, the way our brain works is by neurons communicating with each other. And they do this by the use of neurotransmitters, which are a chemical messenger in the brain and central nervous system that aid in the connection between neurons and they conduct action potentials across the synaptic cleft, resulting in synapses. This working definition is worded specifically to account for two realities. Neurotransmitters do not exist solely in the brain. They've been found to exist, for example, in the GI tract. And the chemicals functioning as neurotransmitters are not always just neurotransmitters. For example, endorphins function as both peptides and neuropeptides and neurotransmitters. There is not simply one trans neurotransmitter that is used to connect two neurons chemically. Up to four of them are used in combination to connect neurons together. The majority of neurons are not directly physically and constantly connected to one another. If they were, like if they were fused together, then plasticity would be nearly impossible. The chemical processes that take place between neurons mean that the brain is adept at changing itself and forming new connections. So the brain is neuroplastic. For clients, these neurotransmitters can actually represent hope that the way things have always been in terms of their thoughts, feelings, and behaviors is not how it is always going to be. The brain has evolved to change and adapt as evidenced by the temporary connections. So there, you know, in terms of neurotransmitters, it's important to explain this process to clients because it gives them hope that change can occur because our brain can change. These two pictures just summarize the process that occurs during neurotransmission. And this slide summarizes the process of neurotransmission. And neurons tend to travel in groups and not necessarily in airways, um, I'm sorry, areas, but often highways. So for example, the groups in the central nervous system that would be called tracks, and in the peripheral nervous system that would be called nerves. There are many different categories of neurotransmitters. In psych, we are only concerned with the ones we see on this slide. We have the monoamines, the amino acids, the neuropeptides, and the cholinergic neurotransmitters, which would be acetylcholine. And for our brain to work properly, it is important that we maintain a correct balance of these neurotransmitters, which I'll talk about in just a minute. But before we go there, it's important to know that um, you know, neurotransmitters can be inhibitory and excitatory, and some can be a little of both, which you will be learning more about in your readings. If they are inhibitory, they make a target neuron less likely to fire an action potential. So in other words, they prevent another actual potential from occurring. And if they are excitatory, they're making a target neuron more likely to fire an actual potential. So in other words, excitatory causes another action potential to be generated. And I talked about the neurons, I'm sorry, the neurotransmitters needing to be in the correct balance. We have billions of amino acid neurotransmitters and thousands of monoamines. It must be kept in balance this way. If not, then we could have symptoms of a psychiatric disorder. And it's important to know how these neurotransmitters work, which we'll be learning this week. But GABA is primarily an inhibitory neurotransmitter. And if you look here, I have an analogy of an accelerator or brake pedal on a car. So I like to think of GABA as the brake pedal on the car. When we need to slow down, when the brain processes need to slow down, GABA applies the brakes. Glutamate, on the other hand, would be the accelerator pedal. It gets things speeded up. And if 
glutamine is too high in our brain, it can be very toxic. And this is what happens when someone has a CVA, glutamate floods the brain. And it really depends on the balance of neuroprotective factors we have to determine what damage a patient might have from this the stroke. So if they have enough neuroprotective factors, they can counteract the um, increased levels of glutamate, causing the glutamate not to be as toxic to the brain, which leads to decreased um, symptoms or permanent disability from the stroke. And so GABA, the brake pedal, glutamate, the accelerator pedal of the car, we. The brain needs to know, do we need to hit the brake pedal or do we need to hit the accelerator pedal? The monoamine and neurotransmitters determine, do you need to hit the brake pedal? If so, how hard? Do you need to tap the brakes or do you need to slam on the brakes? Um, that's what the monoamines do. Dopamine located primarily in the brain in the frontal lobe, limbic system, and substantia nigra. They are very, um, dopamine um, helps regulate pleasure and pain. And as you know, um, as many of you might know, it's um, heavily implicated in the process of substance use disorder. It has several different highways or pathways it travels in the brain. These are listed and there is a picture of these. And this week, one of your discussion assignment is to talk about the pathways in schizophrenia. And this might provide, this slide might provide a clue to help answer the question on discussion board about schizophrenia. There are different dopamine receptor subtypes. The dopamine receptors have very different distributions in the brain. D1 and D2 are found almost predominantly in the neostriatum, whereas the D3 receptors are found in the nucleus accumbens and play a significant role in the pleasure circuit, which is often Im implicated in addiction. D3 receptors are the most sensitive, requiring less dopamine to trigger them than others. The D1 and D4 receptors are found in the cortex. D5 receptors are found in the hypothalamus and the hippocampus. Dopamine's role in the brain appears related to motor behavior and action and reward and motivation along with other functions that are listed on this slide. Norepinephrine, the next neurotransmitter. The first thing to bear in mind regarding norepinephrine is that it is found peripherally within both the sympathetic nervous system and also the brain. Norepinephrine has a variety of receptors to which it can bind. The receptor subtypes are listed here, beta and alpha, and you, beta receptors are usually inhibitory and alpha receptors are usually excitatory, which should lead you to see that norepinephrine can be excitatory or inhibitory based on the receptor subtype. The pathways of norepinephrine all originate from the locus ceruleus, and we also call this the blue center of the brain because norepinephrine is definitely implicated in depression. Serotonin is found in the brain and spinal cord. It is especially widely distributed in the brain stem. It has also many projections into the limbic system. And important to note, there are 14 different subtypes of receptors on serotonin. Therefore, it's not surprising to know that neurotransmitter, um, the neurotransmitter serotonin influences many, many behaviors. Simply put, um, serotonin aids in the transmission of signals to assist in regulating mood, memory, learning, and appetite. Glutamate is both an amino acid and a neurotransmitter. It functions mainly in projection neurons and excites action potentials in neurons. 
So the amino acid glutamine is found in dietary protein. After entering the brain, it is transformed into glutamate. Glutamate itself does not cross the blood-brain barrier, and its level is tightly regulated by the brain, regardless of the amount of glutamine in the diet. Glutamate is the principal excitatory neurotransmitter in the brain. It is also the most abundant, consisting of 60% of all the neurotransmitters. The glutamate synapse is very, very complex. The receptors are involved in learning and synaptic plasticity and may be implicated in a very wide range of psychiatric disorders, and we're still learning more and more about the role of glutamate in psychiatric disorders. GABA's primary role is it inhibits action potential in neurons, and by doing that, it reduces anxiety. Um, and as I'm sure many of you know, Valium, Xanax, or benzodiazepines work by targeting the GABA receptors in order to decrease anxiety, and that's very simply put. GABA is the principal inhibitory neurotransmitter in the central nervous system, and it represents about 25% of the neurotransmitters in the brain. And some studies have found that the cognitive deficits in schizophrenia may be related to both GABA and glutamate frontal circuit dysfunction. Acetylcholine is the neurotransmitter used by the peripheral neurons that innervate the muscle. Stimulation of acetylcholine receptors on muscle results in their contraction. If we don't have acetylcholine released, um, our muscles would be paralyzed. Within the brain, acetylcholine plays critical roles in learning and alertness. 